Welcome back. This is part three in our video series looking at image 12 verse 10 of the secret treasure hunt. In our last video, we tried to show how the images could relate to the southern part of Roosevelt Island. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the verse and show how the verse leads us to the northern part of the island. In the shadow of the gray giant, find the arm that extends over the slender path. Well, I think the, the obvious gray giant would be the Queensboro Bridge. And even though it is now tan colored back when it was originally built, it was gray. It's a postcard from the early 1900s. And I was also able to find in the opening credits of the TV series Taxi. It shows a taxi driver driving across the Queensboro Bridge. And this was filmed in 1978. And you can clearly see that the bridge was gray. So we have our gray giant. I think that one of the things that is interesting about in the shadow of is a lot of people might take that to mean literally, but I think he was using it as an idiom and was using it more figuratively. And so if we take a look at what in the shadow of means, it's when something is given less attention or considered less notable or less important as something else. And on the island, if we're using the Queensboro Bridge as our gray giant, then that would mean we would need a second bridge that is less notable than this to be considered in the shadow of it. And we do. We have the Roosevelt Island Bridge, which is located on the northern half of the island. I would also say it is an arm that's extending off the mainland off of Queens. Take a quick look, look at the definition of what an arm could be. A thing comparable to an arm in form or function, typically something that projects from a larger structure. So it definitely fits that definition. And it would definitely be considered in the shadow of the Queensboro Bridge. It's the only way for cars to get across to the island now. The lift off the Queensboro Bridge closed in the 50s. So this is the only way. It's a, it's a vertical lift bridge, so it goes up or down to allow boats to go underneath it. Uh, but they really don't use it for that purpose anymore. Uh, the only time that they'll raise it up is when the United Nations has people in town and they want to raise it to limit traffic to the island for security reasons. So I think that it is a good fit for in the shadow of the gray giant find the arm that extends over the slender path. The slender path would be the east channel of the East River. As you can see it is more narrow than the west channel and that's one of the reasons why they, they primarily use the west channel now for, for all traffic for, for ships. In summer, you'll often hear a whirring sound. Well, this was a vertical lift bridge. And if we take a look at it, this bridge basically goes up and down this way. It has about 100 feet of clearance. And like I said, they don't really raise it up or down anymore. But back in the early 80s, especially during the summertime when there would have been more ship traffic, I think it's something that you might have heard going up or down a little bit more frequently. And it definitely would have qualified to have a, a whirring sound. The next line, cars abound, I think is just referencing the parking lot on the other side. There's a parking garage which was present before the, the secret was written. And so once you got across the island, you know they try to limit the amount of cars on the island and they don't want uh, a whole lot of traffic. So for the most part, you're gonna, gonna park in the parking garage and, and then leave your car there. So I think that's a good fit for cars abound. The next line, although the sign nearby speaks of Indies native. I think that one of the problems that people are having with this line is they think that an Indies native is somebody that has to be born in the Indies. But if you take a look at the definition of what native means, while it could be a person born in a certain place, 
a native can also just be a local inhabitant. And so if we're, if we're looking at it from that point of view, an Indies native could be somebody from the Indies who is now currently a local inhabitant. So we're looking for a sign nearby that speaks of an Indies native, somebody from the Indies that is now a local inhabitant. Well, nearby we have the Blackwell House. Blackwell House is a historical landmark, and it's the oldest structure on the island that's still intact, and they've done some restoration on it. But it has a sign on its front porch detailing the history of the island. And so this sign was put up in 1981, one year before the secret came out. In 1639, the cabins of the first Dutch settlers were at this location. And if we take a look at a little bit of our history of the island, in 1637, the Dutch governor, Wouter von Twiller, purchased the island. And this man was a, an employee of the Dutch West India Company. So the settlers that he brought over in the next two years to build these cabins would have been people that either worked for the Dutch West India Company, you know, or, or were associated with them in some way. And so it kind of makes sense that the, the sign nearby speaks of Indies native would, re, would be referring to these Dutch settlers. The next line, the natives still speak of him of hard word in three balls, I think is referring to Charles Dickens. He wrote Hard Times, and it was put into a weekly periodical known as Household Words. If you take the, the first word hard and, and the last word from Household Words, you get hard word. And it was also written in three volumes because inside the novel there were three books. Book one, sowing. Book two, reaping. And book three, garnering. And so I think it's just referring us to Charles Dickens. The question is, does Dickens have a connection to the island? If you go north, there's another building known as the Octagon. And the Octagon was a lunatic asylum. And it opened in 1841. And in 1842, Charles Dickens visited the island, and he wrote about this facility. And so there's our connection with Charles Dickens to the island. I don't think that anything in that section of the verse is telling us to go anywhere. I think it's just identifying landmarks on the northern part of the island. There's one last landmark that's going to be important. And that is the Blackwell Island Lighthouse, which we will use as a, a sort of a, a point of reference as we look at it in the next video.